Will, Eddie Jones says we're there for the taking, mate. Do you believe him? Uh, well, you've had one of those years, haven't you, where you have looked vulnerable and then 10 minutes later you've pulled, you've won in South Africa, you've gone to Cardiff who thought they could win for the first time since 1953 and I was there and it was, every time they scored one, you looked like they could, you could score three. Um, you've looked ruthless in the last 15, 20 minutes against Scotland when they had a sniff. Um, and you've managed to put together a run of games that uh, puts you in good shape. Your pack look dangerous, and when they go on the straight up the guts, they're strong and powerful. And you've got some serious wheels and some playmakers. So, um, to answer your question, I don't quite think you're the All Black invincibility that you had in the 70s, 80s, 90s, when we just you just had to turn up to win. I think now there's um, there's a sniff that there's enough England lads who played in 2019 to think, yeah, yeah, I fancy this on Saturday. Okay, all right. Well, how about England that, then? Because that, that, that thing, that's not necessarily I'm saying I'm fancy, but if I was an England player right now and I was playing in the midfield, I'd go, yeah, you know, because uh, Rico and Jordy, there, um, we saw what happened. I know Richie Mung had defended at 13 when New Zealand uh, when Wales scored that nice set piece play from the left hand side uh, yeah you're thinking oh get in amongst them disrupt them and uh, yeah you know have a sniff well look this has been the most Jekyll and Hyde hot and cold year for the All Blacks that I think any of us can remember and you know you're exactly right look you know uh, you know, we, we, we score 40 points against Ireland at Eden Park we lose the next two we lose at home to Argentina we belt them uh, we're a kick away from losing to Australia we belt them in the next game we get smacked at Nelspruit we, we absolutely remarkable last 14 minutes up on the high veld at Joburg uh, we play half ass against Japan we come back against Wales we're scratchy against Scotland you see what I mean it's a pattern that's developing yeah. here, isn't it? Yeah, um, I would say though, have you won five have you won five on the spin? Four on the bounce, pal. Four on the bounce. Four on the bounce. And Mickey in amongst that you've got uh, Japan, Wales, Scotland, and who was the last game Australia? Yeah. Yeah, so okay. You've got to take those with a pinch of salt. But still four games that needed winning. Um you yeah, look I, I gotta go but we go back to where we started really that um it's been one of those years where you, you you feel you've got a chance against the others. I think it's uh, it makes such a headline because it's been such a rarity to ever really turn up as a at a game as favourites. And I'm a relatively quick um, Googler, and there are lots of platforms where you can have a look. But I'm just having a look on the on the bookmakers, mm-hmm. um, you know. And I know you have one must always gamble responsibly. I'm not telling. Yeah, sure. Anyone I would to, say. To do that, but, but they tend to have a do. So England are seven to five. New Zealand six to four on. Uh, what have they got in there? In there. And so the handicap betting. So England are plus three. So you know it's <laughs> a plus three tells me. Uh, the bookies aren't completely convinced that yeah. New Zealand should be read out favourites. And um, we do know, t- Twickenham is a pretty impressive stadium. stadium. It's not quite the fortress it has been, but um, and it's sort of, I sort of never feel that New Zealand will come and absolutely bury us. I think we'll, we will be in this game um, on, on Saturday at certain key moments and it's whether or not a back line for England that hasn't necessarily been firing can, can throw a few punches. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, I mean, that was my next question. Uh, okay, you lose at home to Argentina, you play really well against Japan, so, I mean, and also well, this is... I, I, I didn't think England played that well against Okay, Japan. but this is, I mean, I you know, how are you tracking? Because, you see, the difficult thing as well is that this is the start of your season, so we expect a gradual improvement in an England side playing its third yeah. test, yeah. So, so what we've got here is two sides who've been drastically or dramatically inconsistent in the year 2022. Uh, come up against each other. There are two lads, two teams who were pretty decent at the last World Cup. Uh, England have had a grand slam and won in the Australia 3 0 under Eddie. Um, so, but yeah, I look, I think it's, it's a brave man who sticks his mortgage on either team before the game kicks off because such has the excellence been of these two teams at key moments, but also such as the inaccuracy and uh, lack of defensive 
um, the sort of shutout ability uh, that they've both shown. So it, it, it is. You're talking about Jekyll and Hyde in New Zealand. It, Welcome to England. My yeah, friend. Welcome right. to England. Will Greenwood is with us. Will Cup winner in 2003. When we mentioned Eddie Jones, Eddie, I mean, we love Eddie Jones because working in the media, Will, I mean, you want a guy like that. He creates, you know, the headlines. He gives you the quotes and things. How long has his future got, though? There's a guy called Razor Robertson up there. Coach those barbarians as well, you know. He's made it public that he, if he's not coaching the All Blacks, he'd like to coach England. We're all starting to think, is something going on in the background here that we need to know about? Uh, I was with Razor this week helping him with that Barbarians team. Spent three days um, in camp and uh, him and Ronan go Gara make a we uh, I was their sort of water boys slash chief assistant um, and tea carrier for uh, a couple of the La Rochelle kickers or the ones Ehi, it's Ehi West isn't it? I hope I pronounced it right and, and Antoine has his story has story. Um, anyway what was your question? Razor Robertson look he's going to He's going to be a test match coach. Um, it just depends who manages to, to tie him down quickly enough. The reality is he will be eager to to get something in line for post-World Cup 2023. And um, You'd sort of like to think that New Zealand would go, Let, let's tie him up. But if Ian Foster wins this one, then why can't he do another one? So... It's um, it's a little bit of game of bluff and counter bluff, and the reality is wherever Razor ends up, I hope people understand. He's at some stage, he's in a situation now where what a country might come calling, and another country might dither a little bit, and he might jump in with both feet. And I hope whoever doesn't get in doesn't feel bitter about it. Yeah, good call, actually. Is the England job a bit of a poison chalice in, in, in some ways? Your, your, your dad, of course, was the England coach. I mean, you've got you know, yeah. the expectations. Are, you know, Eddie Jones, beating us in that semi final in 2019 kept his job, did it not? But then there are always calls for, oh, no, that's the end of it. Look, if he beats us again, he's safe to the World Cup, or is he safe to the World Cup anyway? So, I mean, poison chalice, let's just break that down. What does poison chalice mean? It means something that you don't really want to drink from. It looks like a healthy cup that yes. is sparkling and yet it can kill you. It's, come on, it's not a poison chalice. Who wouldn't want the job? I mean, you'd, you'd do anything. That's what an opportunity you've got. You're the most, I mean, I, I think England are the most well-funded governing body in the world, although I know most governing bodies aren't that wealthy after what's happened over the last three or four years. It's got an extraordinary number of players available to you. Um, you've got an incredible stadium to, where the national team can play. You're playing a half decent competition. The Six Nations has so pretty much damn history. good, yeah. Uh, and, and every and every autumn, the best of the best want to have a trot out at Twickenham, and if they can sort the contract out long enough, um, England, Eddie gets to coach against the best teams in the world every year. It's not a poison chalice. It's it's the job everyone wants, isn't it? Well, I suppose if you can if you can absorb all the other stuff that goes alongside, if it was just that simple, mate, if it was just that simple, coaching the team and doing all of that, but then you, you know you know what it's like. I mean, you know, it, it takes a hell of a toll yeah, on people. You get, you, you, you get some grief, I get it, um, but I don't think you'd start out on the coaching journey if you weren't prepared to make some tough calls, uh, make some selections, let some lads down, and say sorry. Um, you're not playing this week. You're not in the squad. You're not in the World Cup squad. Sorry, um, these these they, they come they come with the territory, and then now they're so well looked after in the background. What I mean by they're so well prepped. They do so much research with team building cultures and organisations, and they speak to so many different teams and so many different managers. They get to travel the world and pick the best brains. Yeah, it's not that bad. Actually, when you're talking about it, it's not that bad, is it? It's not. Yeah, it's, 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 it's well, not, as I always say, I hope this is I hope this is taken the right way. It's not the chuffing Syrian peace crisis. Yeah, it's true. A, it's, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's, it's coaching a, a rugby footy. team, isn't it? And it, look, I suppose yeah. I suppose I'm asking that though. On the, by the way, by the way, you get you get a few quid for it. As yeah, well, do, look, especially if you coach England. I, was, I, was, I suppose I was asking because of what Ian Foster has gone yeah. through this year, and it's remarkable over here, mate, yeah. that all of a sudden. All of those with the poison pen who are chopping his head off who and it got really personal and ugly. And all of a sudden, so many of the same media people here are now writing about, oh, the All Blacks are they're reconstructing, they're back, are showing good signs, all of this. You've got to yeah. put up with all of that. But I suppose, as you've just said, you go in knowing that that's coming, right? Yeah, and I think, do you know what? The people that don't get considered, actually, and one of the reasons 
that I know that Martin Johnson stepped away uh, and found, it, it, I don't want to put words into his mouth, don't say he found it difficult, but I know that um, it's, it's the impact it has actually on your nearest and dearest. Right. You, you the coach, step in and you have, you're used to high performance, you're used to wins and losses and 80,000 people and a drop goal beating you in the eight in the hundred you know eddie's eddie's lost a world cup final in extra time um and these sorts of things so they used to that speaking to stuart lancaster the toll it took on his parents right uh, and how tough they found it the toll when my old man was getting the the can and getting there's lots there was only sort of the media there's only you know actual newspapers in those days and maybe a little bit of CFAX, but there was no social media but still you know my old man was hounded out of the job uh can't wait to get rid of him and actually i remember it just having a real impact on on my mom and sister it, it's so i don't want to underplay what you said earlier but in terms of the, the coach himself brian foster i'm pretty sure he surrounds himself with people who will question his authority, ask him why they're doing this, and then they'll come up with a collective decision. It won't be decision-making by cons committee, but it's a sort of decision-making by consensus where he will have the final say. He'll have people surround him who will look at the mountain with a different view, a different lens, and he'll go to people that he trusts, that he will ask and say, how, what am I doing here? What am I getting wrong? How can I help? How can I be better? How do I make this team marginally better today so it is the same again tomorrow? Um, uh, and when you get to that situation, that those guys are—that's uh, what—that's what they sign up for. It, it's the collateral damage to to not uh, underplay your statement before of of how tough these jobs are. I was I was perhaps not thinking about the bigger impact it can have on the on on the families of these coaches. And it's just by just something. This is a weird quip. Are you, are you related to the Ron Greenwood? It was the English football coach as well. Is he? A, is he one of your Greenwoods or not? If, I mean, if you'd like to make him one of my. Go on then. All right. Of course, course he is. In that, that case, case. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, he's not. No. And a couple of quick questions before we let you go. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I've, I don't know if I've, have I answered your questions or have I beaten around the bush. I hope I've got those. No, somewhere. look, you're, it's so brilliant, there's, mate. There's, there's, there's a couple of answers in there somewhere. Brilliant to see to you. I mean, look, and the, and the punters are absolutely going to love it. All right, quickly, Adi Savia. Should he be nominated for one of the World Players of the Year? I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of feeling this is a bit of a slap in the face down here. The guy's been rampaging all year. So, in the old days, I used to be on the voting committee and I would sort of have to take all the abuse when I'd left players out. Now I can hurl things at Go the on, voting Sam. committee. Go on, Go. Sam. What, what rugby games have you been watching? Um, you've probably got to say, um, the run, current world rankings have New Zealand, France, and uh, sorry, Ireland, South Africa, France, top three. So, therefore, they should have one from each of those countries. So, if there's only three nominations... You sort of get it, don't you? All right, then. All right, last question being, your superstition of wearing number 13, that was because of Gerd Muller, wasn't it? Your, your, your devotion to the best striker that ever played for the Germans, surely. No, it was... Uh, uh, oh, my God. I've just gone completely mad. Danny Herber. Oh, the South African centre. Yeah. Oh, OK, right. Yeah, he's good. He scored a hat trick against my dad's England in Port Elizabeth in the first half and basically cost my dad his job. And I thought, oh my God, he's good. I'll wear that number. All the very best. Thank you so much for your time, as always, mate. Can't wait for uh, kick off at Twickers. It's about 6 a.m. New Zealand time. So, good time on a Sunday morning. Yeah, it'll be a great game. I'll be there.